So this brings me no pleasure to talk about. I wish it wasn't the case, but it is. Take a look at this report here. The president's preference is to not get rid of the filibuster. Look at what we've accomplished the past six weeks. So this is directly from the Biden administration. The preference is to not get rid of the filibuster. Now, you gotta just cross your fingers and hope that this doesn't mean, hey, we also don't want to reform it. Because the thing that's been in the news recently is the idea of reforming the filibuster back to the original filibuster, which is actually the idea that I support, which is you make them talk. Used to be the case you have to get up there like in the movie Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, old-time classic. In order to filibuster, you had to go up there and talk and actually filibuster. That makes it a lot harder for a filibuster to succeed. Now the way it works is you just have, you just have to declare... We are filibustering, and they need 60 votes in order to overcome it. Okay, well, that's ridiculous, and it's undemocratic, and, you know, it's insane because you're never going to get anything done, okay? Unless you do it through budget reconciliation, which you only get three cracks at um, for the year, I believe, and that means there's only a handful of things that can get through with 51 votes as opposed to 60. So Biden saying this is a big deal. Now, somebody needs to follow up and ask him, hey, are you also against reforming it? Somebody needs to ask him that. I guess they haven't yet, but we know he doesn't want to get rid of the filibuster. But that gets to Joe Manchin. So Joe Manchin just did an interview, I believe it was with Axios, and um, he said, hey, any legislation from here on out that doesn't get at least some Republican support, I'm not going to be for it. Okay, but... The, none of the Republicans are going to agree to any of the things that the Democrats are pushing. You want to know how I know that? What's happened so far in the Biden administration and what happened under eight years of President Obama. I mean, there, were, there was no Republican support for Obamacare, which was the Republican health care reform. That's a, an individual mandate system that keeps the for-profit health insurance system in place and mandates that people go buy on the private market. It's their idea. The Heritage Foundation came up with it. Newt Gingrich and Chuck Grassley supported it. Mitt Romney did it in Massachusetts. They opposed it. So this is what happens. I mean, there were zero Republican votes for the $1.9 trillion um, COVID relief package. Zero. Josh Hawley pretends to be Mr. Populist. He was against the $15 minimum wage. They're not going to support anything. So when Joe Manchin comes out there and says, hey, everything from here on out needs to be bipartisan or, or I'm going to oppose the legislation no matter what's in it. Okay, well then you're, what you're saying is we're not going to get anything done at all from now until the rest of Biden's term. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. And then for Biden to say, oh, we, my preference is to not get rid of the filibuster. Well, then you're saying we're not going to get anything done the rest of the time in office. Now... I mean, listen, guys, I wish I had better news for you, but if Manchin actually acts on what he said and opposes everything if it's not bipartisan from here on out, and if Biden is against getting rid of the filibuster or even reforming the filibuster, literally no major legislation will pass for the rest of Biden's time in office. No major legislation. None. None. And I hate to say I told you so, and perhaps it's a little bit too early to say I told you so, but when everybody was asking me, as soon as Biden got elected, one of the questions that I got from people was, hey, how do you think it's going to go? How do you think the Biden era is going to go? And what I said is, you're going to have the first like week or two, he's going to sign a bunch of executive orders that are pretty good. Um, there's going to be a handful of policies that we get through that people are going to like. But then after that first week or two, that's it. Nothing else is going to get done. But you're going to have full-on Republican obstruction, and you're going to have Biden and the Democrats still trying to do the goofy, like, bipartisanship stuff. And so nothing's going to get done. By the way, let me add this point. It doesn't matter if Republicans in Washington, D.C. don't sign on to your legislation. You can still have bipartisan legislation in the sense that you push for policies and get it through with just Democratic votes, but the policies themselves have support among the Republican base. 
See, that's the thing. Like, $15 minimum wage is pretty popular among Republican voters. This $1.9 trillion COVID relief package is very popular among... It's like 59% among Republican voters. So I'd argue this bill is bipartisan. Just because the swamp isn't for it doesn't mean it's not bipartisan. Yeah, Republicans in Washington, D.C. are TFG. They're too far gone. They're cretins and they're all bought off by corporate America. A lot of the Democrats are too. So, like... The way you can pitch it is, yeah, we did it with all Democratic votes, but it's bipartisan legislation because over half of Republican voters supported it. So we got to start thinking of these things in new ways. Unfortunately, what they mean is, what Manchin means is, I want Republican votes, Republican senators to get on board with this stuff. They're not going to be in favor of anything. They view their sole job as obstruction, which is why they passed a $1.9 trillion tax cut under, under Donald Trump, which added to the deficit and the debt. And now they turn around and they're doing deficit and debt fear-mongering. What happened? You guys were just in favor of policies that increase the debt and the deficit. There's another thing that's happening now. Tom Cotton's out there saying, the Democrats just gave the Boston bomber $1,400. Unacceptable. So they pick, like, the worst criminals they can find. And they're like, oh my god, look, the Democrats want to pay them. You know who else wanted to pay them? Tom Cotton. He voted for two relief packages under Donald Trump where the same thing happened. Money also went to inmates. And people made a good point about that. It's like that money is actually more going towards the families of said inmates, not necessarily the inmates. They're behind bars. They, they can't really go anywhere or do anything, right? So, but yeah, Tom Cotton supported that under Trump. Now he acts like, oh my God, look at what the Democrats are doing. Unacceptable. This is what it's going to be like for the next four years. They're going to use bullshit partisan hack arguments to come after you. And you have Manchin saying... We need Republican votes to get anything through or else I'm even going to be against it. And he got Biden saying, yeah, I, I don't want to get rid of the filibuster. Okay, well then get used to doing absolutely nothing from here on out. But that gets to the main point, which is that's what they want. That's what Biden wants. I mean, look at how quickly they ran away from the $15 minimum wage and their excuse was the parliamentarian. We can't but the parliamentarian was the thing. And the, oh my God, it's the parliamentarian. What are we going to do? They ruled that we can't do it, so my hands are tied, I can't do it. Even though that's nonsense, that's like blaming your staff. That's just an advisory opinion. You know, the Republicans, whenever the parliamentarian would tell them something they didn't like, they're like, that's nice, you're dismissed, we're going to do it anyway. Democrats? They didn't do that. And the real reason is because they don't want to do it. So they're looking for excuses to not do too much, and that's exactly what's happening here with Biden. But, you know, just understand... Unless something changes, unless Manchin changes his mind with what he said, or, or Biden supports filibuster reform, then nothing major is going to get done the rest of the time in office. They're working on some sort of infrastructure bill now. Dead on arrival. Dead on arrival. No way it's going anywhere. By the way, the House uh, just got their rear in gear and they're passing some decent legislation. We'll talk a little bit about this later. There's this bill called the PRO Act, which is a pro-union piece of legislation. It just passed... Um, the House of Representatives with every Democrat except one um, and there were even five Republicans across the aisle and supported it and what the, the bill does is it classifies gig workers independent contractors as employees which gives them more labor rights it effectively kills right to work laws which are good the right to work laws are really right to work for less they're anti-union laws and it bans um, company enforced anti-union propaganda where they try to indoctrinate you into thinking that unions are bad. So it's a good piece of legislation. It just passed the House. Again, DOA in the Senate. I mean, it's, just, it's not going to go anywhere. So this is what we're going to run into time and time and time and time again. And um, if Manchin doesn't change his mind on that point he made to Axios, and if Biden doesn't say, I'm in favor of filibuster reform, then that's it. We're done. We're done here. Wrap it up. You know, the rest of the next four years are just... It's a waste of time. You're going to get nothing out of it. Nothing's going to happen. And um, But again, maybe that's what the Democrats want. Maybe they just want to do the tiniest tweaks around the edges so they can pat themselves on the back and say, oh, I was a success. Look at me. Now's not the time for that. Now's the time for FDR-style massive change. <laughs>